All right, guys, I'm at the range today, and this video is brought to you by another viewer, uh, Mac Daddy Hunt 11A1, and I forget the other guy's name. I, I apologize. Um, we were talking about the M1A EBR barrel whip screw and uh, whether or not it affects accuracy on heavier barreled M1As. And so today, I'm going to test out that theory as scientifically as I can. Um, basically, I'm just going to start out with the barrel whip screw already uh, installed where it's supposed to be at the correct uh, distance from the barrel. And then I'm going to go back or back it out to where the barrel whip screw is completely out of the EBR chassis and just see what type of accuracy I can get out of it. All right, guys. Thanks hope you enjoy it. Standard uh, ball rounds, XM. 80 CL or 149 grain FMJs. Here's a target. I don't walk down there until I need too much mud on my shoes. Okay, as you can see, those are my first five shots. Not the best, but I'm not using match grade ammunition either, so I think, I don't know if, which, which ones these were, but I think these might have been part of the last ones, had a much, little bit more steady shooting stance. So that's with the barrel whip screw in. Probably do another one. 
with it in just to uh, make sure. Maybe just a turret's a little bit. All right. Alright, let's go check it. Okay, so there's my second group, completely off the target. Let's go back and try our again in just the opposite direction. Windage looks okay. I'll bring it back to the right in a couple, couple of minutes. Elevation is terrible. Alright, let's try it again.
All right, let's go see you this time. Okay, so there's my third group. It looks like we're getting maybe about four, three and a half in my way. Three and a half to four in my way on these uh, uh, non-match rounds. All right, let's go try it out with uh, without the barrel whip, and then we'll do it again with some match ammo. Okay guys, as you can see, I'm taking out the barrel whip retention screw and the barrel whip screw itself completely out. So there is no, no screw on top uh, to impede the barrel. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's go see what happened. Okay, so there's my five shots. There's two, there's two, and there's one. Overall, with non-match ammunition, it seems that it does slightly better without the barrel whip screw. So now we're gonna do a test again with uh, match ammunition on this target. Okay guys, as you can see I've got the screws back in there. Now I used the business card business card method of putting the barrel whip screw in there. Basically, you tighten this whip screw down to where you can just barely get the business card in and out of there. Let's see how it goes.
for this shoot, I'm going to be using some Silver State Armory 168 grains Barnes TSX. I uh, have not shot these before, so we'll see how well they shoot. They are fairly expensive when I bought them, so we'll try them out. If you are curious, that's what it looks like. It's got a hollow point at the end for stabilization. I'm going to zero out the turrets as well. Let's go check and see.
Okay, let's go check that one. Okay guys, I don't know if you can see those shots, but that is my second group. Now, I didn't show you my first group because, well, it's over the paper. So I do some adjustments. So I just held it over, or held under, I should say. And so you get a shot there, there, two there, and a flyer there. So, and that's with the match ammunition. So a little bit better, actually a good bit better, because that's probably uh, roughly two, two and a half MOA. And this is just a little over 100 yards. So not bad, but not too great either. So we'll go back and do it again and try it without the uh, barrel whip screw. Okay guys, as you can see, the barrel whip screw is removed along with the other screw. I'm going to try to do this fairly quickly because my battery is about to die. So, here we go.
Okay, let's go check it. Okay. After taking the barrel screw out, uh, it really didn't do that much of a difference, that much of a change. Um, if anything, actually made it a little more accurate because uh, all these right here are X'd. You can barely see the X in the pin. But uh, these are all from my last uh, strain of shots. And these next five are from, I guess it would be the third strain of shots. One there, there, next to that one in the X there, here, and a flyer there. I felt that one go. So, if anything, the barrel whip screw seems to uh, hinder the M1A loaded, or probably even the uh, heavy barrel, which I don't have the heavy barrel, so the medium weight barrel on mine. Alright guys, this is uh, Ranger again with another uh, video. This video is about the um, necessity of the M1A barrel whip screw. Now I did a video a while back about how to install the barrel whip screw and I had a gentleman that goes by uh, the H2O man on YouTube. He made a comment about um, about it and so did Mac that 1911A1 and uh, H2O man and I had heard the same theory about how, or thought about the same thing, that, that the barrel whip screw didn't have as much need or necessity in uh, EBRs that held uh, heavier barrel M1As. And I commented back to his comment saying that I may end up doing an experiment with, uh, with that theory. And so I went out today, this morning, and, and Proceeded with the experiment. Now it wasn't scientific because I'm not the best shooter in the world. I didn't have any sort of uh, arresting system for the rifle to keep it to take the me out of the equation as much as possible. So, I mean, you have the you have the human factor as well. Um, I shot 40 rounds. I started out with uh, the Federal XM 80C. Cartridge, uh, 762 by 51, 149 grain, um, and I went from there to the Silver State Armory, 168 grain Barnes TSX. Uh, I chose these rounds because uh, it's the Federal XM80 rounds are fairly inexpensive, around twelve dollars per box twenty, and uh, anybody who probably has a battle rifle has had some of these rounds. Um, and probably has a lot of them. And I chose the Silver State Armory because they're on the higher end of the spectrum. And I have i don't have much experience with the Silver State Armory, so this was a, a new one for me. Um, so, and I chose those, because, like I said, because they were more expensive. And those come, I got those for about $36 a box. So, that was pretty expensive. It hurt. It hurt to buy those, but um, I'm going to show you some uh, targets here, and uh, then I'll roll in the footage. Uh, one thing I'd like to add: the, each one of these groups is a five-shot group. Um, they're all shot at about 100, 100 yards, maybe 125 yards, give or take. Uh, the video cut out before my last five shots were were shot, so. I apologize for that, but without further ado, uh, we're going to start out with the Federal uh, M80 Ball cartridges. My first group, that one right there, let's see, it was about four and a half inches, maybe five inches high, and about four and a half to five inches uh, to the right, so not too bad, but the spread on those is three and a quarter or three and three quarters, thereabouts, maybe four inches, um, <clears throat> which isn't too bad. I probably could have done a lot better. I haven't taken this rifle to the range in some time, so 
I blame me for the um, widespreads, I should say. And uh, three of these groups were done with the barrel whip screw in. The last uh, group was done with it out. My second group is there at the top of the paper. This one right here. I tried to adjust for the impact and adjusted incorrectly, so there's a the result. My third group is down to the left. Not right there. Got one, two, three, four, and five right there. And this comes out to about three and three quarters, almost four inches as well. Um, so with this, these rounds, I'm getting about, like I said, three and a half to four inches of MOA. Um, and that was with the barrel whip screw in. Now my last shots were taken with the barrel whip screw out. And you can see them right down at the bottom. Um, here's one, two, three, four, and the flyer being the fifth round. The only thing I noticed different about the barrel whip screw being removed with these 149 grain rounds is the impact shift. I held the exact same uh, spot on target and while I did get a bit tighter group, I believe that's uh, two and three quarters, almost three inches, maybe a bit more. Okay, three and a quarter, or three and three quarters. While it was somewhat tighter, it shifted down about four, four and a half inches. So the barrel whip screw does play a little bit of a role in, in your point of impact shift. Um, okay, move on to the 168 grains. Here we are with the uh, 168 grains. Uh, fired at this target from uh, 100 yards. Um, the first two groups were shot with uh, the barrel whip screw in, and the last two are with the barrel whip screw removed completely. Uh, the first group is here at the top of the page or top of target. Um, I didn't change my adjustments from the last target with the 149, so there's a bit of an impact shift. So I readjusted the uh, windage and just held under to, uh, to compensate. Um, my first shots that hit paper were these right here. Got one there, there, and these two, and then a flyer there. The four rounds right here come out to two and three quarters, two and a half inches. Not bad. For 168s. This rifle, I believe, prefers the 168s over uh, 149s, 150s, the lower grain uh, rounds. Um, so, not a bad overall group. Um, if you include the flyer, it opens up to three and a half, almost four inches. So, <clears throat> and that was the last group I, I shot with the barrel hoop screw in. The next group, I'm gonna, the next two groups will be with it out. Um, Okay. Now these five shots here, here, there, and these two were without the whip screw. And honestly the results were about the same. Mine is the impact shift like, like I had before with the other uh, one of the 149s. Um, about the same MOA. About two and a half to uh, three and a quarter with the, with the flyer there included. Um, it was after I went and checked this target and set up the camera that the camera died, the battery died. Um, then a gentleman came up, I don't know his name, he offered me, offered to let me use his uh, lead sled. So I, I, of course I said yeah, because you want to take out as much human factor as possible in your shooting. And uh, I set it up shot five rounds and what I came up with with were these shots here these two those two right there and that shot right there 
Um, uh, spread on these. We'll do these four right here. That's a solid two inch group right there. If you add in the one down here, about just under three and a half inches. So not bad. Um, obviously with the grip screw out, the point of impact stayed the same. So um, not too bad. So my opinion on the barrel whip screw, it's not necessary for heavier build barreled M1As. Um, I intend to do more further testing with it um, because this is my first time out with this rifle in a while, and I I personally take responsible for these terrible groups, so I could do much better with those. And I intend to once I get better better ammunition. Um, but yeah, there it is. Thank you guys for watching. Please comment and subscribe.